Hello, Carol Under here again with another video tutorial, this time on the Advanced Applique tool, which is the little bunny. And you can see it's greyed out here because we haven't got any objects selected. In order for the tool to become available, you need to create some objects that will surround or enclose an area where you can put some fabric. Now the objects don't have to be closed objects like they were in the auto applique and the partial applique. They can be open objects. They can be your open object tool, your open freehand tool. They can be. They can also be closed objects. They can be um, the closed objects, the closed freehand, the block digitized, the circle and the rectangle. So you've got lots of options and it talks about them in the online manual under the help on-screen manual I should say. Creating open object applique, that's where you'll find all the information starting here. Now in the help menu um, it will actually talk about I'm going to close that because it was far too big for your screen but um, it will talk about primary objects and um, the primary objects are the objects you digitize. The secondary objects they're talking about are the placement line, cutting line and tack down line. And so um, if you're confused what they mean by those because they don't explain them very well, that's what the difference is. So you don't need to worry too much, you just need to create your um, little design. I'm going to do a little house for us today. Now you should also watch my Christmas Teddy series particularly parts 3 and 4 and particularly if you have version 5 software because it, that was done in version 5 but there's not a lot of difference between version 5 and version 6 so even new version 6 owners can watch that and learn from it. Um, then there's also um, Better Advanced Applique is a very short little video about the differences between the um, version 5 and version 6 um, tool. So both those are good watching and um, cover some more things in detail there. Right, let's get right into it and start creating our applique. So I'm going to use the open object to start with and I'm going to use an outline and I'm going to use the blanket stitch. Okay, now um, I'm going to digitize. These are going to be for the walls of the ha of a little house. So I'm going to digitize there to there and enter. It's one wall and on the other side of the house go up this way so that the teeth face in the other direction. Enter and I'm just going to get rid of these. So arrange start and end just so they're not confusing the issue, I'll put them at the first and last stitch of the design. Okay, so I've got um, my first wall, then it jumps over here and stitches up my second wall. I'm not going to worry about the stitch order until I've finished, I'll sort that out then. So I need a roof now, um, closed object for that, and a satin outline. And I'm just going to create a roof here very roughly this will not be a design I will use but it will demonstrate for us now I'd like to change the color of that to red okay uh, I need to select it first don't I color red now you'll notice that I'm in not in um, artistic mode there's a reason for that we'll look at that later but we will look at it in artistic mode at the end. Now a little door, let's um, use an open object, satin stitch and a different colour, let's go green and do our door. Enter. So you can see that that is an open object, it hasn't closed over at the bottom here. And let's use our rectangle tool to create some windows to match. Okay, one there. And I could duplicate, but I'll, it's quicker just to do this for the moment. Um, and I'll select both of those and align them. Hold down my control key and select the other one and align them horizontally so they're nice and neat. And then I'm going to put some sashes across those windows as well. So my open object tool, 
set and outline still with the green I'm just going to digitize the sashes enter and one over here enter and I'm going to um, put some grass along the bottom so we'll choose another oh, I'll align those two first though um, so let's control and align centers horizontally that's nice and neat now let's just put some grass along the bottom and we're done so an open object satin and open object satin and color a darker green all right notice I'm making the stitches overlap the other stitches from the other objects this is very important if they don't overlap you won't have closed areas it's a bit like using your paint program I'll just enter that um, if you don't close an area in your paint program the color bleeds out all over the whole picture well it's the same with your applique it won't work unless you have closed areas okay so we're just going to um, select that grass and I'm going to apply from the object properties the um, textured edge so I need to check that and apply yep that's okay okay so I've now got some grass along the bottom okay so you can see I've got different open and closed objects these um, this roof um, actually I can see if I zoom right in that the um, blanket stitch encroaches past the edge of the roof it wouldn't it, provided I've got a darker roof than the blanket stitch it's not going to matter too much but just to be super neat I'm going to shorten so I've got the select tool in operation I'm just going to shorten this line a little bit there enter and go over and shorten the other line they're still crossing but I haven't got um, it encroaching into the area where the fabric will go the other thing I want to do is I'll show that one to one um, is to go over to my color film and move my window sashes so that they are underneath the windows so I move that one up to there and this one up to here okay now they're underneath and I'm just going to have a quick look the only jump stitches I've got aren't really jump stitches it's where it, the uh, sorry I do have one jump stitch from this green window to that green window the other jump stitches I have are just travels traveling from one object to the other um, there is a little jump stitch between the door and window there they're the only two jump stitches that will have to be trimmed I haven't got anything going across the window or anything ugly like that the software's done a pretty good job of sorting out the start and end points for me so all I need to do now is go to my advanced applique tool but it's still grayed out because I haven't actually selected my objects in this case I need all these objects for the design for the applique part of the design so I need to I it's quicker just to go edit select all all right and then we'll see even though it's still gray it is a brighter gray um, your advanced applique tool is now available and when you apply that you will get two things happen one you'll get a hatching in the area where the um, fabric can go and it looks like it's one big piece because it does actually go across these other lines here these other outlines but in actual fact as we go along you'll see that it works as separate pieces the other thing to notice if I zoom right in here is that the blanket stitch is sitting outside the fabric that's because the digitizing line goes down here and the blanket stitch sits centrally over it I'm going to fix this right at the end so don't worry about it now you'll see how to fix that in a moment so I'll just go back to one to one okay now the, the um, applique properties box or um, toolbox here um, is in a logical order so all you need to do is go through in logical order the first one is place the fabric and color in patches and just left click on that and it will open up the fabric choices you've got um, various collections that come with your software you can use any of those and just um, select a lot of color there um, I'm going to grandma's house sounds like it might have some colors that are relevant 
Oh, country cottage might even, yep, country cottage is nice. So I'm going to use some of those. Let's use this red sort of color for the roof. And I'm just going to go over here and left click. You'll notice that when I went over, a white line appeared around the area. See how even though the hatching goes right across, the areas are still separate. So there's a nice little roof for us. And for the walls, let's go this light yellowy color. And so I'll go across and a white line and notice the doors and windows are excluded from this area. I'm going to left click and the walls are finished. Okay. Now you don't have to ju you just use fabrics, you can use colors only. And of course you don't have to match the fabrics exactly to your fabrics. Um, you can scan your own fabrics in and save them in the software. That's for another day, I'll show you that some other time. But really, if there's fabrics in there that are fairly similar or just use plain colors, unless you really need to see what it's going to look like first. So if you want to just use color, just click on the place color in patches and you'll have a choice of light, medium or dark colors. I'm in the light at the moment. Um, I want a nice bright green for the door. So I'll choose that one and I'm going to do the door. And see though, even though these were two open objects, the door you, um, upside down U sort of shape and the grass were both open objects but they have overlapped to enclose an area. And for the windows just this light colour here. Now you'll see that because of the bar running across, the sashing running across the window, you've got two separate window areas. You need to fill them both in on both windows. Okay. Now after you finish putting fabric and color in, you can just click on the back or you can remove any fabrics you don't like or colors you don't like and replace them with another one. When you finish sorting all that out, um, just click back. And what I'd like to do now is I don't want to be cutting out tiny little bits of blue fabric. It would be much more sensible to have one square bit of blue fabric for the window. So I'm just going to use the merge tool, merge patches together. And it tells you what to do here. You just need to come across and left click on the first patch. You'll get a red, oh, sorry, red ring around it. And then go to the second one and left click on that. And it will become one patch. I, by left clicking a couple of times there, I undid. Sorry, that was a bit confusing. So I'll go over to the other window. Left click on the first one, it becomes red. And then left click on the second one and you get one white frame around your window which means there's only one piece of fabric going, one placement line, one cutting line for that, and one tack down line. Okay, now again, if you didn't like your merging, um, you could unmerge. The other thing to notice too, that um, if I just um, go back and remove some color, um, so um, I can just, um, remove that from the window and I'll just do it on one window to be quick um, okay and go back and place uh, I need to unmerge patches so I'll unmerge that and now I've got the two separate patches and oh, it looks like I'll have to remove the fabric again uh, remove the color Remove the color from there and remove the color from there. Good. Okay. Now if I had two separate areas that were two different colors, so I'm going to place color in patches again and choose the light blue is fine. I'll have the light blue there. And if I had a light, oh, let's go bright so you can see the difference. And I had a pink in there and I wanted to merge these. It doesn't matter that they're different, but the resulting color will be the one that you choose first. So if I want the blue, I need to choose the blue when I'm merging. So let's just go back and merge patches and choose the blue first, it turns red, then move down to the pink and left click on that and you'll find it merges but it takes on the color or the fabric that you chose first. Okay, now we'll just go back once we've got all that sorted and we get to our stitching properties. So we can set the colors automatically which will give us a choice of placement line, cutting line and tack down line in three separate colors or we can match the color of the cover stitching. 
um, I'm going to leave them as the three separate colours because if you need to go back through your design they're easy to find. Okay, stitch, stitch types automatically setting. If you left click on that, which I just did, um, it will set the tack down and run stitches automatically. So for blanket stitch it will set a running stitch tack down and for satin it will set a zigzag so you don't have to think about that. Now if I can undo that and undo again that should take me back to set stitch types manually. If I want to I can do this manually but I need to select um, all the areas I want to do before I can operate this. So if I wanted to I could select the roof line, um, select that and hold down my control and select the window and the other window and the door and the grass. Now the grass is part of it. yes it's taken its part well it's the outside line of the um, fabric that we're worrying about because you're not going to have a tack down line or a placement line out here because it's not joining into a fabric so there'll be a short line here and a short line there and so if I go over here I have got everything except the blanket stitch so I can then set a placement line a cutting line a tack down line and leave the tack down line a zigzag because I want don't want a zigzag under the blanket stitch. I can choose run stitch for that later when I, I'll do that separately. Um, I can change the width of the tack down, the spacing of it, the color, and I can change the offset. Okay, and go back. Now I can do this for the blanket stitch as well now. So I'm going to select that that one first. One I'm going to set that to a run stitch. Well, it's actually defaulted to that because it knows it's a blanket stitch. Um, and I can set all those manually. So go back and set stitch types manually for the other blanket stitch. And that's gone to a run stitch as well. Okay, back. That's because I did them automatically to start with. Um, we can always recover our original embroidery if we don't like what we've done and we can't un find a way to undo it. Um, we get, or if you get confused, just recover your original embroidery and start again, which I just did accidentally. So I'm going to undo that. Right, I've got everything back again. Once you're finished, you just go close and you've got your design. Now we want to fix those blanket stitches. So I'll click off and if I try to select the blanket stitches, it selects the whole design because it's an, uh, an advanced applique, it's done that. Um, so what I'd like to do is use the break apart tool now, left click on that, and that has actually broken it apart so I can actually select my blanket stitches. And I'll just go to the object properties and select the offset option, apply, and if I move the box out of the way here, you can see that that's moved the blanket stitch into the fabric. Okay, and just do it with the other one as well. Select the offset option, apply, okay. So you could set that before you digitize them or you can do it afterwards, um, which it's entirely up to you. And that's your little advanced applique. So I hope you had fun doing that, or watching that I should say. You might like to go and try something for yourself and see what you can do. Thank you very much.